Funding for this channel is provided by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi people! Welcome to video! <laughs> a video that I've had the books for for over a year now. I've just been very nervous to make it. Why is that? Well, because today we are reading none other than Elias's favorite books. If you don't know who Elias is, but you're somehow watching this baby booktube channel, what are you doing? I've been making videos since 2006, so I was like 11, 12 years old, but I've only recently started booktube in like 2020. Elias, on the other hand, is an OG booktuber. His first public video, titled Introduction to Booktube with three exclamation points, was posted seven years ago. Booktube in 2015. So ahead of the times. He is the times. He is the moment. <laughs> Since then he has amassed over 104,000 subscribers and presents some of the coziest and creative thumbnails that lead you to videos that harness the energy of sitting down on FaceTime with a friend. I feel like not only do I have so much to learn from Elias, but also I'm just a genuine fan of Elias. I'm such a big fan of Elias. Which is of course one of the reasons why I'm nervous to make this video. It's very nerve-wracking to read the favorites of an icon. It's an honor. It's a privilege. But on top of that, I don't like to lie about my subjective experience with books, my opinions on them, I don't see the need. But I also don't like hurting people's feelings. <laughs> the cognitive dissonance in this job. And I've seen one or two videos where people read my favorite books and it brings me so much joy to see other people enjoy books that I love. So I want to be able to provide that same experience, but what if I don't like the book? Which leads me to reason number two I'm so afraid to make this video is that one of the authors I have tried before and I DNF'd one of their books. However, that being said, I'm also very excited to read Elias's favorite books because we are so compatible book-wise. Just look at this. Look at how similarly we review books. How exciting is that? This is so rare. We also share several favorites, including Unearth Briefly Gorgeous and A Little Life. So let's jump in to the three books that we will be reading this week to get a taste of what it's like to be Elias. The first being the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, Summer Suns by Lee Mandello, and The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And I'm gonna break them down in the order that I think I will enjoyed the least to the most. The one I assume I'm gonna like the least is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. I know that everyone loves Madeline Miller, but there was just something about Cersei that I couldn't click with to save my life. I'm just like not the biggest retelling girly. I really like it when people make their own stories, but I'll go in with an open mind, I swear. The Song of Achilles is a retelling of the Greek myth Patroclus who follows Achilles into war, and somehow I have managed to go all 28 years of my life not knowing what unfolds in this story. And while I am nervous that this this one is a little overhyped and that there's no way that it could live up to said hype. I do have higher hopes for this one because it is gay and Cersei is not. I thought Cersei was gay and it is not, but this one is. Hooray. And also people seem to prefer this one over Cersei, so mathematically speaking, we should legally have a better time with this one than we did with Cersei. Fingers crossed. I apologize in advance if it's not for me. I'm so sorry. Please don't unsubscribe. Up next we have Summer Suns by Lee Mandelos. This is a book that I made sure to get almost immediately after being published because of the hype that Elias had for it. I trust his opinion with my life. This is a story about Andrew and Eddie who are two best friends, basically brothers, they do everything together but then one day Eddie dies about an apparent suicide but Andrew doesn't seem convinced that that's the case. So he kind of begins the search for truth behind his best friend's death. This is classified as horror, mystery, thriller, fantasy, so it's a little bit fantastical, a little bit magical, a little bit mysterious but apparently a lot of it depressing. So sounds like my cup of tea. <laughs> and finally the book that I believe will be my top tier favorite, maybe earning real estate on my favorite shelf is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I've heard so much about Erin Morgenstern, this is the same author who wrote The Night Circus, which is such a big deal. I've seen The Starless Sea on a few booktubers' favorites list, so high hopes. The back says, when Zachary Rollins stumbles across a mysterious library book containing details from his own life among its pages, it leads him on a quest unlike any other. So it's a magical realism story, which is like my favorite genre, and also it's about books and stories, and that's all I know, but I don't think I need to know much else. I'm really looking forward to going on this labyrinthian adventure with Zachary. So let's find out together which one will actually be my favorite of the stack. Let's find out together how I feel about reading one of my favorite booktubers. Favorite books. Which one do you think I'll like the most? Vote now on your phones! <laughs> also in true Elias fashion, we are wearing one of our favorite graphic tees. It's a crew neck, but bear with me. But I also DM'd Elias to ask him what kinds of activities I could partake in this week to get the true flavor of his life. So on top of reading his three favorite books, we're going to be partaking in the three following activities. One, make fancy ramen. Two, spending lots of time with my cats. We already do that. I'm really excited. And three, go used bookstore shopping. And of course, naturally, including bloopers at the end of my video. It wouldn't be an Elias video without bloopers. <laughs> I've been collecting said bloopers for the past year or so, so stay tuned to the end to see how many times I thwack myself in the face with my books. Anyway, I'm really excited. Let's get started with the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller.
Hello. It is day two of reading like Elias. I had my fancy ramen for lunch. I don't need eggs, but I did put broccoli, dried seaweed, and extra chili oil and green onions in there. So I think we met the fancy quota. I'm a little over 60 pages into the Song of Achilles. The only way I can really understand what's going on is if I break it down as if it were drama. So let's recap. Protagonist pushes Clemoslios and Clemoslios cracks his head open. Protagonist is a soft boy. Parents of head crack boy tell Prince Soft Boy that Prince Soft Boy needs to be exiled because he cracked Clemoslios' head. Soft boy parents say that protagonist is now a nameless orphan even though we never got his name in the first place. He becomes a foster child of a king named Peleus in Phthia and Peleus is immortal and he finds a sea nymph to make Achilles and Achilles is this like green-eyed rich boy who went into the cafeteria of all the little army foster children just to juggle and dip. Nameless orphan is actually named Patroclus. We're gonna call him Patty. Patty missed some of his orphan army boy lessons. Achilles is like my dad's gonna smite you. Patty said, say I was with you. Aki said, okay, great, come to my lyre lessons, lyre lessons, the, my musical lyre lyre lessons, and then it won't be a lie, even though it technically is. So, lyre lessons to not be a liar, but um. And then Achilles is juggling more and he's like, Patty, let me teach you how to juggle. Strong Jess Mariano pick a card energy. What are you doing? Oh, this? Nothing. But then Patty describes Achilles and says when he smiled the skin at his corners of his eyes crinkled like a leaf held to a flame That's beautiful. They kiss nymph mom. So angry at this Apparently if you're a goddess ocean lady You can use your powers in the creepiest most hateful homophobically fueled way and spy on your teenage son So she said you're coming to my ocean cave and so Achilles goes to the ocean cave Oh, yeah, also Achilles has some like prophecy of being the greatest warrior fighter man ever and also the water nymph mom tells Patty You're gonna die soon and I'm like Spoilers. And that's what you missed. Hungry. Am I invested? Not super. Is it better than Cersei? Yes, because I DNF Cersei around page 60 because it was just names, 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 names. There are a lot of names in this. Am I struggling with who's important and who's not a little bit? But at least something's happening. There's something to keep track of. You know what I mean? So we're gonna try and finish this today, but who knows? I've been editing all morning. I have to go and meet my friends in the library to get some Dutch done, and then we'll see what the rest of the day has in store for us. Just thought I'd update you. Bye. Okay, okay, let's chat, shall we? Do you wanna chat? Let's chat. I got new books, I got new books, I got new books. So, about a month ago, I made a video sharing my favorite graphic novels, and I asked y'all to share your graphic novels with me. I have thus, thusly acquired approximately four to five pages worth of an online TBR, strictly on your graphic novel suggestions alone. Unfortunately, I don't currently have the funds to purchase all 800 books that are on that list, so I'm going through it one by one. The two that I selected for this round, everyone's an alien, would you're an alien? Alien too, or everyone's an alien when you're an alien too, but just misspelled. It's very simple. It's about a little alien. I assume that they are discovering aspects of our world, but I've had it on my TBR for a while, and then when I had so many people suggesting it after finding out that I loved the mundanity and Becky Chambers' writing, it just felt all too right. I'm really not sure what to expect, but she's here. And then the next one is a graphic novel that I've never heard of before, and it is In by Will McPhail. Somebody actually DM'd me telling me all about this. The back says it's about Nick, a young illustrator, and he can't shake the feeling that there is some hidden realm of human interaction beyond his reach, which doesn't really tell me all that much, but all the reviews I saw online were like, I was not expecting this. Wow, this was so good. So we shall see. I threw these in my online cart when I pre-ordered Samantha Schweblin's newest book, which should be here in a week or two or three or something. Hi, Elvis. For now, I spent the morning editing. I am this close to being finished with it and then let's sit down and discuss The Song of Achilles because I am over halfway done with it. The drama is heightened. I need to finish it today. So let's finish the video and then let's get reading. <laughs> 
videos done. I have the whole weekend to read. I'm so excited about it. Am I a little more invested in this book? Yes, a little bit. I'm just not that blown away. We'll go through a really big chunk of mundanity and then Odysseus flies in and is like, oh yeah, by the way, there was this dude who was so hungry, like could never be satiated. So then he took his son and cut him up and made a little sun loaf out of him and then was like, Daddy Zeus, my little sun loaf is ready, sweetie. And then Zeus was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then re-stitched up the sun loaf to create a person again. And they're like, anyway, moving on. Excuse me? Okay, like I said, there is some drama. We can't really get into it because I don't want to spoil it, even though I'm sure all of you have read this already. I'm way late to the game, but I don't hate it. And I would like to see what happens, I suppose. So I'm gonna film me reading this until we're done. Go. Hello my friends and welcome to another exciting day of reading like Elias. Let's rip the band-aid off and let's talk about the song of Achilles. Uh, okay, okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I'm so sorry. Breathing heavy. There's this TikTok that I saw recently that said something along the lines of, honey, was he fun or were you just fun and he was there? And that's how I feel about Patroclus. Patroclus, Patroclus, Patroclus. Patty and Aki. Patty has a history. He's seen some things. He's putting the work in. Achilles, on the other hand, is just some spoiled rich kid with mommy issues and no personality. Unless that personality is exclusively toxic masculinity. I get it. It's Greek mythology. The characters are meant to be flawed. And I get that Madeline Miller wanted to tell this story while only clarifying the fact that Patty and Achilles were gay. Personally, in my opinion, if you're going to retell something, I think you need to spice it up a bit more than this. That's just my opinion. For example, it is historically accurate that women wear war prizes. When fighting took place and a battle was won, the prize was often a human being. But to me, I couldn't root for these characters because of how much they were trading human women like Pokemon cards. And perhaps that's a me issue because I'm, you know, applying my modern day X, Y, and Z to this ancient tale. However, however, Madeline Miller has a bachelor's and master's in Latin and Greek mythology, and I've read online that she personally was like, I am so sick of everyone saying that Patty and Achilles were roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. No, they were in love. Let me write this wrong. And I think that's great. It was just a very dry experience. All of my notes on this book were just what was happening so I could keep track and remember because it wasn't sparking any emotion whatsoever. And I just couldn't root for Patty and Achilles, which is the whole point of this whole story because I I thought Achilles sucked eggs. I thought he sucked eggs. I think Patroclus should be with somebody else. You know when your best friend has a man and that man is the most lackluster far in a jar you've ever met and you're like, I don't like him, but like if you like him, I'm happy for you. We've talked about this a lot. When I'm reading people's favorite books, I always think that I'm the problem. I always think that if I didn't enjoy something that somebody else enjoyed, I did it wrong. Part of me thinks I did this wrong. I don't give book star ratings anymore, but to be completely honest, if I had to, the song of Achilles would probably be like a two for me. Not a full one, because I think it was cool that Madeline Miller applied her extensive knowledge in these tales, right or wrong in history. I think that's cool as hell. Did I enjoy my reading experience? No. Do I hope that all of you don't hate me now and that Elias will not block me? More so, yes, absolutely, 100%. I genuinely just think at the end of the day, my biggest qualm with both Madeline Miller books is that her writing just doesn't click with me, which is a personal thing. It's not an objectivity truth. If you like this book, that's not wrong. So hashtag justice for breweries, hashtag get Patty a new man, hashtag stop using prophecies all the time because you're spoiling the ending. <laughs> okay, it's done. I said it. I said it online. It's on the internet. I'm not gonna lie about my subjective experience with the book. What a silly thing to lie about. Last night, I started Summer Suns. I read a few chapters. I think that we started off on a pretty slow foot, but I am intrigued to put the pieces together. I'm enjoying learning who everyone is, and there's a creepy little ghosty element to it, which I'm enjoying. We're only on page like 40, but hopefully we can make some serious progress in her today. We've made our ramen, but we have yet to secondhand bookshop, which I want to do today. I have to run a few errands, so that's on the docket today. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I'm sorry I didn't like the song of Achilles, but I'm glad that 
that I read it because you can't be a booktuber and I have read the Song of Achilles. I feel like that's illegal. I was breaking the law and now I'm a law-abiding citizen. Despite not liking it, I might still go to jail, but I followed the rules, you know? Okay, let's go to the secondhand bookshop. If you're still watching, if anyone is still there, we'll go together. Bye! I did it. I ran my errands. Let's talk about all the things. We got another set of scentless candles because I use these in my bathroom because it gets dark so early now and you can't turn on the bathroom light without the fan and I think the fan is too loud. Just to some things. Are you ready? You're not ready. It's a giant jar for my kimchi. Ding! It's so big and it has one of these lids. Somehow we keep losing the lids to our mason jars. I have a theory that Lawrence is throwing them out. He refuses to admit it, but where else are they going? Answer me that, sir. And she's ginormous. I could definitely fit a whole cabbage in here. Psych. We have the books, but don't look at them. It's a surprise for later. We're gonna do that last. I got this big blue sweater because my friend Alex got me the coolest t-shirt ever for my birthday. She thrifted it and it has this little farmer girl. It says natural vegetables, product of farm, new fashion, created especially for girls. But it's a little too big. It goes past my knees, which makes it a perfect nightgown, but this is too cool of a print to not show the world. So I'm going to cut out this cool design and put it onto the sweater to make something new. We've done this before. It's a great hack for when things don't fit you and you don't want to say goodbye to stuff. And then... A big squishy blanket because we only have one blanket in this house and it's a thin small Ikea blanket that Lawrence had in his bachelor pad and your girl wanted a nice squishy big one that is new and fresh and chosen with the female gaze so whew, she's perfect she's perfect let's open her oh my gosh it's as big as me it's touching the floor Let's go to the couch and talk about the books I found, shall we? We shall. Rumi likes the new blanket. Is it perfect for biscuits? Perfect for biscuits. I found four books at the used bookstore. I was there for like almost three hours, to be honest. I went through every book, every shelf, everything. There's definitely an emphasis on thrillers because tis the season, am I right? So the first book I found was The Farm by Tom Rob Smith. Our protagonist's mother is committed to a mental hospital. She keeps calling him and telling him that she's not mad, that he needs to call the police. And then he keeps getting calls from his father saying, your mother is crazy and you don't know who to trust. And also it just sounded really unique. I love an unreliable narrator. But this is the only one that I hadn't heard anything about. And I think that that's really fun to do. That's one of the pleasures of bookstores, in my opinion, is finding things that you wouldn't normally find. Boom. The next thriller I found is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. I've had this on my online TBR since 2020. It's about three women. They're all married to the same man, but none of them have met each other yet. And so I believe that someone leaves a note in the laundry for another wife to find and things happen. Things unfold. We love a domestic thriller. The next book I found Oh my gosh, I am so excited about it's the passenger by John Mars and I'm pretty sure we've talked about this one before So John Mars wrote another book called the one and I read it with my Sunday book club years ago It was so interesting. It's very black mirror esque, and this one is no exception It's about eight drivers who are all in self-driving cars and then suddenly all the doors lock and the inside of their cars are being streamed Across the nation and they have to vote on who will die. This sounds horrible. Just sounds awful Not as in like an awful reading experience, but just a nauseating concept, right? Oh, I'm intrigued Okay, and the last book is very unlike the other three. It is Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McNulty. So this is a nonfiction. It's a memoir about Dara and them retreating into the forest and becoming a naturalist, becoming a conservationist, and features his unique perspective in having that autism diagnosis and balancing his interest with the world around him and high school life. I just thought this was such a beautiful copy and I've had it on my radar. There are very few books that I have found so far that feature neurodivergence or autistic characters, people. So there's just this very magical feeling in finding a book secondhand that you've been searching for or that you've just been really psyched to read, you know? It just feels like a sign from the universe. I don't know how to describe it. So totally get why Elias loves secondhand book shopping so much and you can consider me the same. So those are the finds. That's it. I'm very hungry and also we need to make some progress on summer suns. So that's probably what the rest of the day is going to be. Break.
you running? so many times through blood a lot but it was worth it because look at how cute it is i am product of farm i am fashion made especially for girl <laughs> i finished my morning responsibility i did some patreon designing i did my dutch studying and now the afternoon is left for us and our own devices and then also this evening lawrence is off to play magic the gathering so we have even more time just for us and fine literature and breathing <laughs> I'm always unsure of how much I'm allowed to share about a book until it hits spoiler territory, but I usually feel pretty safe when I'm only this far. So where we're at right now is that there are two friends, Andrew and Eddie. Andrew's family adopted Eddie after Eddie's parents passed, and Eddie inherited literally millions of dollars. But where we start the story is Eddie is dead. Andrew inherited all those millions and is now going to Eddie's school to A, figure out why Eddie died, because everyone says it's suicide, but Andrew's not convinced, and B, he was meant to go there anyway because he was supposed to study there, and Everyone studies creepy stuff, like occult studies, fantasy, gothic, spooky stuff. Andrew and Eddie have a past, not just friendship-wise, spooky-wise. Something happened. <laughs> and Andrew assumed that only he and Eddie knew about it. But the more people he meets at this college, the more he finds out that everybody knows. And now Andrew's all freaked out. And that's where I'm at right now. It's sunny and the leaves are bright, and so I'm gonna walk to that tree that I found earlier this week and just read under it. That's my plan. Let's go! Hello, hello, hello. Would you look at the time? It's 7 p.m., which means my day is over. <laughs> I had a very rough health night last night. Whenever that happens, I start to get anxious about the next day. Like, oh my God, if I don't get a good night's sleep, then it's all over. And when I woke up this morning, I didn't want to get out of bed, but I was telling myself, girl, you have your little routine. You know you feel better when you do your little routine. Showing up for yourself, even if you do it a bit slower, is better than not doing anything at all. And I'm so glad I did because so much got done today. I prepped my cabbage for my kimchi. So I'm gonna make my kimchi paste. It's a recipe that my friend gave me. She curated it herself if you want to make kimchi that is plant-based meaning you just like skip the fish sauce google it google it this is my first time making it without her so i cannot teach you how to do it i don't know what i'm doing google it follow those instructions there's a little under 200 pages left which i can totally do in a night lawrence is out of the house now i've got the evening to myself i am intrigued the writing is very gorgeous i just kind of feel like a very dumb person because i'm a little confused by it but i am here for the characters i want andrew and riley to kiss but who's gay don't know uncertain as of right now it's time to relax let's do it <laughs> Good. 
Good morning, crusty crew. Do you know how yesterday I was saying I had a bad health night, didn't sleep that great. A bad night doesn't mean a bad morning. And even so, a bad morning doesn't mean a bad day. And I had a really fine day, despite the odds last night. Awful, worse than the night before. Now my body is very achy and I hardly got any sleep and I just feel deflated. <laughs> on one hand, I feel very grateful and happy that I'm able to have my days. But on the other hand, she needs to sleep. <laughs> so we're just gonna hope that it was a fluke that two days in a row suffering <laughs> and we're gonna take it as easy as possible today i'm so bummed i totally could have finished summer suns last night but my body had other plans i have like a hundred pages left that's it so i'm gonna knock that out this morning and then we still have to read the starless sea and i wanted to read this one today she's also quite long as far as summer suns is concerned the first two-thirds of the book you're more so getting to know all of eddie's friends the friend that died all of his friends which is nice i'm enjoying going to this college and learning about these people but i really want to learn more about Eddie and Andrew, like the two main friends. And the fact that there's only 100 pages left and there are still so many unanswered questions leaves a lot to be desired for me personally. Let's finish the last 100 pages. Let's drink our tea. Let's get this ball rolling, shall we? Yes. So I finished Summer Sun as my son arrives. <laughs> chubby one just for fun. He's a chubby one just for fun. Ugh, I'm in a pickle because, as I said earlier, huge fan of Elias, trust his reviews to the high heavens, and I would like to maintain a mutual online friendship based on a foundation of love. And I feel like this video could destroy any possibility of that maintaining. Okay, here's the thing. We started out friends. <laughs> like we've already established, it's about two friends. We start the story off with one of them being dead and the other one wants to figure out the truth. So they go to his house and live where he lived with his roommate. There's also a spooky component that we don't figure out what it even is until the last like 80 pages. It's not that I hated it. It's not even necessarily that I didn't like it. I just didn't actively love it, you know? I was kind of here for the exposition, even though it took like over a hundred pages to kind of get settled. And I started loving Sam. I started loving Riley. You know, the people that Eddie was friends with before his passing. But Seeing as the whole point of this story are these two friends and the friendship that they had and it was so strong and you want to figure out what actually happened, I wanted to know more about Andrew and Eddie themselves. I wanted to care about Eddie so much and I wanted to care about their friendship and I wanted to feel sad. But instead, most of my investment came from, huh, I wonder if he's going to party with Sam today. Hmm, I wonder what Riley's up to. And that just felt misplaced. That didn't feel correct. Maybe that's a me thing. I also struggled to figure out what was happening when things were getting spooky. I was just a little bit confused through and through. And I was trying to tell myself, you know, that I was having a good time and that it was fine and that I cared and I was invested. And then I got to the last 30 pages and instead of being like, oh my God, what happens next? I was like, I might get up and make some lunch now and get back to this in a little bit, which isn't the best indicator of one enjoying a book. Ooh, I feel terrible. I don't know. I thought it was fine. If we have to give it a star rating, this one would probably get a three for me. We're going up. We're climbing up. It's improving. Once again, it was fine. I just feel the need to defend myself, not loving it as much as Elliot, because that's the whole point of this video. Ah, oh, man, I really thought that I would love, 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 love this one. I really did. There was some really beautiful writing. I loved how Mandelo set the scene. I loved the descriptors, but there were a lot of parts where I just felt confused is all. And I wanted more and less all at the same time. And now that we've officially passed the halfway point in this whole video, I'm here to remind you. Once again, I do it all the time, but people take it really personally when I don't subjectively enjoy words on paper that they subjectively enjoy. Just because I didn't have the best personal experience with a book doesn't mean that you shouldn't enjoy it, doesn't mean that I think you're dumb because you enjoy it, doesn't mean I think that you have lackluster taste because you enjoyed it. We all just have different preferences. We're all just looking for different things in a book when we open one up. That's all. So when I say that I didn't like this book, what I am not saying is that I don't like you. Got it? <laughs> okay. Up next we have The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. All I really know about this one is that a boy finds a book and then he goes on an adventure in the book. It's giving me labyrinth. It's giving me never ending story. It sounds like my cup of tea. I think I'm gonna like this one, right? It has to happen. If it doesn't happen, I'm gonna feel so bad. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, everyone, don't worry. I'm only on page 24 and the intrigue, the intrigue is there. Magical, magical, oh my God, okay, okay. It very much started out as a never ending story. Have you seen that movie, Is My Age Showing? Um, where a kid finds a book and he's reading the book and he's like, 
Wait, is this fucking play about us? <laughs> but it's very beautifully written. There's this part where he's saying that he feels guilty about reading, but that he just spends so much time in front of a screen that sometimes he needs to rest his eyes on paper. Relatable. I just love when people throw their two cents into things, when their rambling thoughts are just included in the story. The vibes are immaculate already. We've only just begun. I'm intrigued and they're short chapters. So I have a good feeling about this. I just wanted to come in with some positivity because I feel guilty. I'm having a good time. <laughs> We're back on the couch. Is anyone surprised? Yesterday I managed to read effortlessly, might I add, the first like 110 pages of The Starless Sea because she's liking it! It's good. It's good. So what I had wrong was that this isn't about a boy finding a book. He's a man, but when he finds the book, there is a moment from when he was a boy and that's unlocking all these doors, quite literally. I think the writing is exquisite. Out of this world, beautiful, gorgeous. It's slowing me down and most importantly, it's playing the movie in my head. For the Song of Achilles, no thoughts had empty. No movies were playing in my brain. For Summer Suns, occasionally, I would feel like I was in the space and then I'd be a little confused and no thoughts had empty. But this one, I'm there. Every word just flows and creates this beautiful little scene in my brain and I love it. So yeah, today we're gonna finish this. I know that there's like almost, wait, math? Wait. Almost 400 pages left to read, but the fact that I read through 100 of them without any effort or trying is a great sign, and I feel confident and great and excited. Another green flag to show that I'm liking a book is when my notes aren't keeping track of every moment because they're stored in my brain because I have emotional ties to every little blip, and I love it. This is what my notes so far <laughs> say. That's where we're at. I'm so excited. I'm gonna finish this book now. Let's read. Okay, quick reading update. But before that, I wear my noise canceling headphones for noise canceling and listening to instrumental music. For some reason, I get like 10 to 20 comments asking what I listen to or why I wear headphones when I read. Here's your answer. I am just at the halfway point and I am just enthralled. Do I know 100% what's going on? No, but it's very reminiscent of Piranesi or the ocean at the end of the lane. You're feeling the magic, you have some questions, but you really are strapped in for the ride. And I don't require all of them to be answered in order to enjoy my time. I literally just read another 150 pages of this book without even trying. So, <laughs> oh, I'm so curious what's going to come together. I love Mirabelle. I love Mirabelle so much. I'm just learning more about this magical little place. I love when situations and atmospheres are confusing and you have a protagonist that is just as confused as you are because then you can learn together, you know? It's frustrating when everyone's on the same page and then you just feel stupid because you're not picking up on everything. I am just as confused as Zachary, but I'm also just as interested as Zachary. Halfway point, I am cozy, I am happy. I'm so cozy, in fact, that I think I'm gonna bake a cake. I made some veggie noodles for lunch. They were exquisite they were divine but I just want something warm and sweet that makes me feel like this book makes me feel so I'm gonna go make a vanilla cake and keep reading this book okay I only have 100 pages left but it's nice out and I haven't had fresh air in 48 hours so we're gonna go for a walk First 
things first, I specifically bought this t-shirt for this video almost a year ago and I chickened out for making said video. But here we are, the video's made, it's done. The t-shirt says, I only like dolphins and Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> you know, cause Elias is the king of graphic tees, king sponsored by Redbubble. So obviously she needed to make an appearance before this video was through. We have officially read all three of Elias's favorite books. And I thought we could do a quick, not only reading wrap up, but just this whole experience as a whole wrap up. Before we dive right into the reading wrap up, I just wanted to clarify, I don't make these videos to test and see if we can trust booktubers taste are these booktubers lying to us that's not what we're doing here i like to read people's favorite books because i think it's such an intimate way of getting to know someone i think what people select as their favorite books is such a beautiful expose so to say on who they are as a person and what themes are important to them and what kind of characters they're drawn to i think that that's such a beautiful thing so even if i'm not the biggest fan of what i read i still love the experience as a whole and any of my upset or anger or frustrations in this video was more so just me being upset that I didn't love something that someone that I like loved as well. So first and foremost, thank you for sharing your favorites with us, Elias. What a sneak peek it was to see what makes your heart sing. First and foremost, as you know, we read The Song of Achilles. This was not my favorite thing. I would go as far as to say I didn't like this book. I will also be unhauling it, I think, because so many people liked it so much. It should definitely go to somebody who can appreciate it for everything that it is. Like we said earlier, I just think that Madeline Miller and I are not compatible as reader and author, which happens, and that's fine. We then read Summer Suns by Lee Mandela, which had a lot of elements that I quite enjoyed but also was lacking in a lot of areas. There were some parts that I very much liked but overall this was okay in my opinion. And last but not least, the one book we haven't talked about and my favorite one of the stack, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Oh my gosh. What was it about this book? What is Morgenstern putting in these pages? I need to know because I've genuinely been itching to stay in this space. This book is almost 500 pages long and it didn't feel like it at all. It ended and I could have stayed in it for another 500 more. I loved it. The characters. <laughs> defined. Concise. Interesting. The world. Mysterious. Atmospheric. Magical. How can a book have such beautifully mundane low stakes but also high stakes at the same time. I've never seen it done before. Could I perfectly relay everything that took place in this book for you? Most likely not. Are there still a lot of things that confuse me about this book? Yes. But like I've already said, this one is very reminiscent of Piranesi or The Ocean at the End of the Lane. In a sense that the space is so magical that you sort of accept that there's absolutely no way that you could have all your questions answered because the world is so expansive. Like, I think this world is bigger than my entire brain. Look at all of the dog-eared pages in this book. I love this so much. How many times can I say it? He finds himself wishing the proper people to talk to would light up or have hovering indicator arrows over their heads or dialogue options to choose from. He doesn't always wish that real life were more like video games, but in certain situations it would be helpful. Go here, talk to this person. Feel like you're making progress even though you don't know what it is you're trying to do exactly. Is Zachary neurodivergent? Welcome to the club, baby. It is easier to be in love in a room with closed doors, to have the whole world in one room, in one person, the universe condensed and intensified and burning, bright and alive and electric, but doors cannot stay closed forever. Owies. I read some online that this book isn't a book about books, it's a book about stories, and that couldn't be more true. Strange, isn't it, to love a book, when the words on the pages become so precious that they feel like part of your own history, because they are. Because they are! <laughs> it does not get any easier, it simply becomes familiar. Ow! There's so many. There's so many. I love the theme surrounding the stories you tell yourself becoming a reality. Not so much in a manifestation sense, but more so in a you kind of create your perception around what happens to you. You tell your own story. I love that theme. I've only found it in one other book and it's a Chuck Palahniuk book. Needless to say, I'm relieved to have found this one. <laughs> I've been huffing that citrus oil that Z's mom gave me, but I don't feel mentally clear. I feel lemony and insane. <laughs> There's so much. There's so much. I cannot possibly go through all of them. I just love this. This book was transportive. It wept me off my feet and and sent me somewhere else. I was having a really weird health week. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep and it's days like those where I really just wanna leave my body and pretend that I'm someone else driving somewhere else and this book did that. If you are somebody who really loves some action and who really loves a thick plot to sift through, perhaps this one isn't for you. But if you like vibes, if you like magic, if you like whimsy, here she is! Oh my gosh! So even though mathematically speaking, we only liked one third of the books that we read from Elias' favorites, first of all, I consider that a success. Second of all, the success that was there was just so strong. And this is why I urge you all to keep reading. If a book gets you in a slump, or maybe you're just not having the best time, there are books out there for you. We all have different tastes, but all of our tastes can be fulfilled. You just have to keep trying. Once again, thank you so much, Elias, for sharing your favorite books with me and with us. I had such a delightful week. Thank you to everyone on Patreon.com who make it possible for me to upload as frequently 
recently as I do. If you want to head on over there and take a peek, we have a book club. We have a Discord where we talk about food and animals and video games and all kinds of things. There's bookmarks, there's downloadables. It's a lot of fun. Please join us if you'd like. And as always, thank you for clicking, thank you for caring, and thank you for being nice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Hey, bad boy. He's a crazy, crazy big, big, bad boy. He's a big, bad, bad boy. He's a big, big, bad boy. Oh, Lord, he coming. Oh, yes. <laughs> so big. The song of Achilles. The song of Achilles. <laughs> in high school, in the United With a warm bubble bath, a glass of... I am on page 78 of Beautiful World, Where Are You? Page 95 of page, ow! Uh. <laughs> ow, what the fuck? <laughs> ow! Anyway. <laughs> You're too big. I hope Pierre gets as big as you.